Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. Congressman Mark Amaday of CD2 here for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Carson Valley, hate your planes for the good times. Carson Valley. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low, and our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way, because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. Early in the morning, or throughout the night. Professional truck drivers are on the job, serving you. Safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators. From the exotic to the everyday. Trucks are everywhere, moving everything. Never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. When in Carson City, Nevada Newsmakers records in the conference room at the Bank Saloon. Coverage of the 2023 legislative session is brought to you by Liberty Dental Plan, making members shine one smile at a time. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. The Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County, your RTC, our community. NV Energy, proudly serving Nevada, providing electricity to 2.4 million electric customers. And by Nevada Builders Alliance, building a better Nevada. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad on No Holds Barred Political Forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, coming to you from Carson City, Congressman Mark Amaday's hometown. <laughs> Not a long drive for you today. That's right. Pleasure to have you back on the program, sir, representing CD2. Thanks, Sam. Um, let's start out. There, there's so much stuff to, to start out with. Um, the first thing I wanted to ask you about was the Bright Line train that's supposed to be going uh, between the Las Vegas Valley and going into California. Um, Seems like from published reports that the entire delegation, including yourself, are in favor of this. And they're talking about a stop in Ivanpah for the new airport. What can you share with us about this? Well, I don't think there's a lot of secrets at, at the moment, so I'm not going to keep any from you. But, um, you, you know, as we continue to matriculate and how do you feed the market in Clark County, I mean, that's one of the options. Uh, you can't. You know, I remember Jacob Snow used to be the head of their uh, regional transportation, transportation yeah. authority down there, saying at some point in time, building more lanes isn't the answer. I mean, he wasn't talking about, but, but I mean, at some point in time, can you fly enough airplanes? And is that, in, you know, it's like, I think diversity is a good thing in terms of how you get people to that market. And that is clearly, I mean, their draw is Southern California. If that's a way to do it that increases that materially, pays for itself, you know, all those responsible things, then obviously that's a piece of the puzzle. Um, I played an interview for myself with Rosemary Vassiliadis, uh, who's the airport authority director down in Clark County from 2014. And she was talking about Ivanpah and the fact that it's 6,000 acres down there and that there was going to be a need for this airport and it wasn't just going to be for freight it was going to be uh, for international and sure. long-haul flights so this is really a big deal and my understanding is that she is um, supposed to attend the legislature this week uh, to give some information Rosemary Vasiliadis, obviously the better half of the Vasiliadis household <laughs> hi Billy good morning um, <laughs> but, but anyhow um, yeah I, I think when you talk about responsible planning in any context, yeah, there's a need for, for the airport down there. Um, I think the pie though, Sam, if you will, is big enough to where it's like, it's not all air, it's not all uh, passenger car, electric car, whatever the heck it is. Um, 
it's not all train. Uh, although I, I um, and, and so I think it's just one of those things where it's like um, all options should be on the table, and if they're viable in an economic sense, then let's go. The one thing that is concerning is that um, uh, the airport authority put out the fact that um, the airport will be out of space at Harry Reid in yeah. 2030, and the new airport won't be online until 237. That seems to me that that's untenable for gaming. Well, um, I think those schedules will need to be adjusted in terms of if you want to keep all cylinders firing, um, to use an internal combustion uh, uh, example there, but uh, I think it, it's going to have to be accelerated because you don't want to pause what's going on there based on, well, uh, but, but it's not just transport. I mean, you got water, you got all sorts of other infrastructure that goes with you know, it's interesting, Sam, people very seldom sit down and face the fact that we're a state of three plus million people and 50, what, what is it, the latest numbers, 54, 55, 56 million people a year visit Las Vegas. And so you're like, well, you know, we got three million plus people we got to kind of take care of in this state. It's like, no, actually we don't. Because on any given day, um, high season, low season, uh, it's like, no, we need resources to take care of a much bigger transient population in terms of tourists. Um, my understanding is that the Southern Nevada Water Authority and MV Energy have been fully involved in the planning for this. Um, so they, to my understanding, have accommodated the water needs of this. Uh, but Tick Segerbloom, for example, is concerned about the growth of housing going all the way down the 15 uh, towards Ivanpah. So. Well, There'll be we, some interesting discussions. We know from Northern Nevada that, that housing is, is, is a key part of the, the, the puzzle in terms of availability, which then turns into um, affordability. Um, let's change topics um, because I'm, I'm not usually one to jump on what was the big news over the weekend on the Sunday shows, um, but the change in immigration status that's coming up along the border um, is going to be stunning in terms of the number of people that are lining up to come across the border and I just think back to the late 70s um, and 80s, mid 80s, w which was the last time we had immigration reform. Yeah. Um, and uh, Simpson Mazzoli um, were the two people, uh, Simpson in the Senate, Mazzoli in the House, um, that got the immigration ball rolling that ended up with the Immigration Reform Act that Reagan signed in 86. Yep. Who are the heroes going to be to come forward with a concrete proposal? Is there any discussion in the House or the Senate, to your knowledge, of something that needs to be done to accommodate what's happening? Well, Steve Scalise is, is the primary pusher behind a bill that was just introduced. Um, I was on the Judiciary Committee, um, not recently, when we actually passed several immigration bills um, which never saw the light of day on the floor of the House. Now, that was John Boehner's house. And so, I don't want to brush over your history lesson. It's been since Ronald Reagan, since we had it. A few things have changed since then, whether you're a Democrat, Republican, or Independent. And it's also in the Constitution says, the Congress will establish a form of naturalization. That's immigration. And so when you sit here and you like what Obama did, you didn't like, you like what Trump did, didn't like, I don't blame any of them because of a vacuum, because Congress for, in, in my view, totally political reasons, refuses, like, oh, well, one side thinks they like them because they're going to vote for them, and, and the other side, you know, thinks that their base is going to go nuts because, uh, uh, what's her name on Fox, uh, Laura Ingram, every time you say immigration, she automatically gets a case of Tourette's and, and says um, amnesty, and it's like, there are responsible ways to deal with this, and it should be, and the fact that it hasn't been done by Congress is, I, I lay entirely, both sides, I mean, it's a bipartisan hit, if you will. Um, so I'm excited that Steve Scalise has gotten behind one. That means, I'll be bold here, Sam, don't tell anybody, um, immigration reform will pass out of the House in this Congress. We'll see what the Senate wants to do. You know, it was interesting to watch 60 Minutes last night. Um, they did a story on the meatpacking plants across the country, the cleaning of the meatpacking plants at night, and they discovered over 100 kids between the ages of 13 and 17 with we're fake cleaning. papers were doing the cleaning. Yep. And what it said to me in, in loud, loud noise was, 
we have all these people who want to come here, not for citizenship, but for jobs. And they would be more than willing to take any job. Why are we not having kids in school when we could have their parents and et cetera um, working in jobs that we need? And especially here in the back, construction. I mean, you look at almost every field. We need workers. Yep. And uh, but why are they coming? Economic opportunity. Sure. But you need to bore down a little bit more. You know, it used to be, well, it's Mexico. Mexico, over the last 10, 15 years, has done a pretty good job of building a middle class. They're doing meat packing. They're doing some large import-export stuff. No thank you, Chinese imports. But as you go through all that, this is more now Central America that, that is coming because Mexico is, has developed in terms of providing that economic opportunity at home. That's not a bad thing. You just have to manage it. And, and so, Congress, you need to get, I, I mean, dreamers are low-hanging fruit. It's one of those things. Where they're serving in the military. And I'm not here to do an ad for, for any of those folks. I'm just saying there are solutions that do not require somebody to tear up the Constitution or to throw the borders open, either one, because as we can see from a management aspect now, and I think the borders are largely open. It's just my opinion. Everybody gets to have one. It's like you don't need to open the borders. There's a way to orderly make sure that we have a system that works, that fits our needs. And, you know, that stuff, well, they're taking jobs that Americans want. It's like, well, not I'm not really. seeing it. I'm yeah. not seeing it. I could be missing it, Sam. But the examples are not, it's not like somebody sitting home saying an illegal immigrant or an undocumented immigrant, I should say. Is, is taking my job. It's like, really? L let me know that. Because if there weren't people who needed to hire them, they wouldn't be gaming the system the way they are now to try to make it work. Here's a concept, and let me know what you think, because it could be totally stupid. Um, you know, we're concerned about people coming across the border, and for economic reasons, obviously. Um, why are we not financing things in Mexico or in somewhere else in Central or Southern America um, that would give people an opportunity to work and make money and would give us time to take a breather and figure out what we're doing. I think the Israelis missed that opportunity in dealing with the Palestinians over the years where you know, it's, it's high tension rather than economic development because if you have nothing to lose, then you do whatever. If you have something, you don't want to lose it. There are a few examples. I think it's H2B or something. It's an investor visa. If you, it's a government program that doesn't cost any money that says, if you want to come to this country and invest X amount of money and you create X amount of jobs, we'll get you a green card. I mean, you go through the background. There's a process to it. You go do all of that stuff, and it's like, it's working. Let's, let's expand that. Um, it's totally supervised, all that stuff. Um, and, and I was talking to some of my colleagues, they go, well, it's buying green cards. And it's like, well, um, it's working, you know, whether you, it's like, well, everybody doesn't have a million dollars to invest. It's like, well, that's fine. There are, we can have other programs for them. But for these folks who want to create jobs, why not? The other one is we did a, we did a bill, uh, and I got criticized for voting for it, with, with ag workers saying, okay, here's the way that you can come and fully supervise and make some sense and whatever. It's like, oh my God, it's whatever. It's like, hey, I'm sorry. I just missed the facts that said this wasn't a responsible way to fill that need in that area. And so um, a case-by-case -case approach, I think, is, has is already been proven. You say, well, how do you expand that larger? It's like, well, I don't know, but we're not talking about that. We'll see with Steve Scalise's bill. We're just saying yes or no, up or down, and it's like clearly that, that is indicative of no thought about how do we deal with the issue and solve the problem. The issue is immigration. The problem is what do we do to fill, you know, these jobs reports now say, oh, there's X million jobs available. It's like, well, clearly nobody's filling them. Um, and, and so I, I guess it goes back to, and, and I don't want to generalize, but everything that gets uber politicized in terms of an issue or finding solutions, in my experience, most of the time gets destroyed. Which is sad. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back more with Congressman Mark Amaday after this timeout. 
Pro Group Management is the place where companies can find workers' comp solutions that are designed to meet their specific business requirements. As regulations evolve, Pro Group takes a proactive approach to clear the path to make sure your business stays ahead of the curve. Knowing your workers' comp program is optimized, you can focus on other important matters related to your growing business. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Located in the heart of Carson City, the Bank Saloon is a historic watering hole with a modern feel. With a variety of classic cocktails featuring Nevada spirits, space for private events, conferences, and an incredible atmosphere, the Bank Saloon offers a great location to work and play. Come visit us. Located at the corner of 5th and Carson, we'll save you a drink. Big R and Sparks is located on Bering Boulevard next to Smith's and across from Reed High School. It's a 50,000 square foot hardware store and a whole lot more. It's your spring headquarters with lawn and garden supplies, power equipment, and outdoor living. Big R on Bering Boulevard and Sparks next to Smith's and across from Reed High School. Big R. Hardware and a whole lot more. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, coming to you from Carson City, we continue our conversation with Congressman Mark Amaday of CD2. I have to ask you, Jackie Rosen up for re-election yeah. to her Senate seat. Jim Marchant announces his candidacy. Thoughts? Um, you know, he didn't call me and ask for advice, if you can believe that. <laughs> um, but supposedly, all rumor, um, He's bringing in a national guy that was in the Clinton White House. Um, I should know his name. Um, but, but anyhow, so your question becomes, so who's going to pay for that? So, you know, Sam, it's America. Anybody can run. Um, and so there you go. Does it concern you about the depth of our bench for Republicans and in, and in certain cases Democrats um, that this is who we have? as the first person to announce? Well, I think you've been around this longer than I have, but... Um, that's just a rumor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me trying to say that I'm young, but anyhow, um, you know, there's some, some people, well, the first one to announce has an advantage. It's like, I don't know that, that that's true or not. You know, the Senate races are many nationals. Um, Adam Laxall can tell you, um, you know, he raised a lot of money and, and, and it made, by the time you throw in all the national packs and stuff, I think he was running four ads in the Vegas market at, during the, you know, the, when they were really duking it out and, and between the packs and other stuff, they were like uh, 18 or something. And so, it, I, I don't say that, say nobody should get in, everybody should get in. I'm just saying, know what you're getting into because it's, I, I mean, the Senate has become... Um, such a political and national, you know, uh, uh, bellwether, if you will, or control center that you just can't, uh, it, it's, I remember when Harry Reid and Sharon Angle, oh my God, Harry Reid spent $26 million and Sharon Angle had 22. That won't even, that, that's not even a primary budget. Seriously, seriously. Let's take another break. We'll be right back. It's the Lucky Lexus Cash and Free Play Giveaways at Tamarack. Weekly Cash and Free Play winners plus a 20,000 cash winner guarantee. And drive home a brand new Lexus NX30 or walk away with 42,500 in cash. It's a good time to win at Tamarack Casino. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity, 
Reno is becoming bigger, Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Save money and take transit. Did you know you can ride the bus all day for less than what it would cost you for a gallon of gas? Plan your trip now by going to rtcwashoe.com. Hi, I'm Renee Summer, our digital news anchor here at 7 at 7. Watch our streaming nonstop newscast immediately with your mobile phone. 7 at 7 is the new way for you to get every bit of local news you need in just seven minutes. Breaking news, local neighborhood news, weather and sports are just a click away. Reporters bring you all of what's happening in the Valley from Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, YouTube and more get every bit of local news you need from the RJ and LVRJ.com. For 50 years, Nevada Heating has been keeping people comfortable in their homes. At Nevada Heating, call the Do It Right guys and get the air conditioning back on today. That's the Nevada Heating way. Why sweat for days on end when Nevada Heating can get your air conditioning fixed today? Call us today and we'll fix it today at 323-5585 or schedule us on our website at nevadaheating.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Congressman Mark Amade of CD2. I want to ask you another question, this time on the national level. Joe Biden, Donald Trump, the age. When are we going to transition to the next generation? Well, um, election 2024 is all already underway. Everybody sure. knows that. There's still, though, a lot of political water to go under the bridge between now and nominating time and things like that. And so it'll be interesting to see. There's some, uh, you know, your question is, when are we going to transition? It's like, I don't know, maybe. Maybe it'll be in 2024. Um, but it obviously isn't going to come early in 2024 because neither one of them are going... Thanks for the memories. I'm going to go join the older I get, the better I was club. Uh, but you've got, obviously, you've got Governor DeSantis. You've got uh, Senator Tim Scott um, on the R side, among others. Asa Hutchison. That are very interesting folks. It's like, well, let's see. You know and I know, though. Let's just talk about tribal stuff for a minute. It's like, who's got the delegates to get the nomination? And so I know that's already underway, too. And I think that's what the Trump people are focusing on. But I'll also say this, Sam, if, if it's going to be kind of a, an objective analysis, I think there's also a segment out there, we'll see how big it is, that's like, that doesn't want to rematch. And I'll just, I'll just leave it at that, and it kind of gets to your question of, okay, so when are we going to transition? And so, I don't know. Um, maybe 2024, sure as heck. Um, the one after that, and we'll see what, what, you know, I mean, the whole house is up every, every cycle anyhow, um, and, and we'll see what happens in the Senate stuff. Um, I guess the scariest thing about it is it has become such a money Olympics that in, in pursuit of the money Olympics, I think we're missing some substance. What's your no kidding idea? Okay, that's your idea now. How are you going to make it, how are you going to get it out of committee? How are you going to work with you know, how are you going to move the policy and the solutions forward? And, now, come and it's on. a scary time. The public has no clue about any of that. The, all they understand is the 30-second commercial. They have a really good clue on whether or not they got to get rid of their stove, whether or not their, the gallon of gas costs whatever, whether or not they're worried about whether or not their bank's going to, and, and I'm just picking a few, whether they're worried about the border. So it's like, okay. But, but then, Sam, and you should know this, all politics is local. It's like, what are you going to do, senatorial, presidential campaign, to make to bring that home in Winnemucca? Because if you do, you win. But you can't just sit there and spend zillions of dollars on TV ads that are, and I know this is a family show, that are bovine scat and go, well, what the heck? They're all dumb enough to believe it. It's like, shame on you. Why don't you give somebody some real red meat, substantive stuff in an, and this is the key part of the sentence, effective way to see if they'll vote for you. Instead of we just got to consult each other to death 
and billions of dollars, and, and look what it's gotten us. You know, it's kind of funny because you're one of the very, very few politicians I know of your caliber, which is a high caliber, um, that doesn't use a whole ton of consultants. You make your own decisions on your campaigns, you make your own decisions on your advertising, and it's amazing, you've won every race. Well, but, but, but I, I don't think it's, I just go like, if there's value there, I'll pay you. But I want to see value. It's not like, well, you got to do this in order to be a real whatever. And so, and you know, I'm at a level where it's like, you know, and Nevada's still, uh, even though it's grown a lot, it's like, hey, listen, there's no secrets in Nevada. No. Um, which is a good thing. But, but still you're like, it's this naive belief if, if you do a good job, that election stuff will take care of itself. And if it doesn't, then I take full responsibility for making the mistake, you know? And so I, I think that can still work, but we're so far away from that culturally in, in a lot of the statewide and, and the national stuff to where it's like, who's in charge of Minnesota? Well, get them on the ground and be there. And it's like, if you really want their trust, you gotta, you've got to do something other than just flood the airwaves. Um, just a quick answer to this, because we're out of time. Um, is this presidential election going to be the battle of vice presidents? I hope not. And that's where we have to leave it. <laughs> Congressman Mark Hamaday, always a pleasure, sir. Thank you for being here. You Come too. back soon. Thanks, Sam. And we'll be right back. Imagine a magical garden that feeds Carson City's hungry and homeless, teaches our high school students agriculture, creates hanging floral displays to beautify downtown, and yet charges nothing. It's not magic. It's the Greenhouse Project. It's real, it's growing, and it needs your help. Go online to carsoncitygreenhouse.org so together we can grow it forward. The casino industry drove Nevada's economy for decades. By the 1990s, however, the state's sole industry was in sharp decline. Many were losing their homes, many were leaving the state. Is Reno on track to be the Detroit of the West? Was an October 2010 Reno Gazette Journal headline. Nevada knew it was time for a change and a time to diversify. Story County took that lead, took risks, invested tens of millions transforming its desert into a place of opportunity and a future for Nevada families needing something new. That desert now provides thousands of high paying tech, advanced manufacturing, and energy careers at companies like Tesla, Panasonic, Google, Switch, and Redwood Materials. Story County transformed Northern Nevada forever, and the tide of opportunity has raised all vessels through construction contracts, high paying careers, and the power of payroll. Tens of millions have been generated in sales and property tax, permits, and other revenues for Reno, Sparks, Washoe County, and for all of Nevada. Enough, in fact, to generate a surplus after public services are provided. And best of all, a sustainable economic climate has been created, enabling our children to stay in Nevada and live prosperous lives in their home state. Story County, improving Northern Nevada one industry at a time. Our thanks to the Bank Saloon in Carson City and the Builders Alliance for their help with our coverage of the 2023 legislative session. We'll see you on the next broadcast.